how did you want to do it? Like, okay, we're live. Uh, I'm going on your PGG right now. Um, what the fuck, fucking Chilean keyboard. It's still fucking hard to use. <sighs> All right. What's your name on League? Is it the same as what you're what you are in Discord right now? I think I already have you added unless you're going on a different account. Or oh, you're searching the up, that's right. I have a million different accounts, dude. <laughs> um Okay. I haven't really dealt with one of these yet before. What the fuck is this? Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> Why does this keep going down? Holy shit. Alright. Um First of all, if you want to go up in rank, you gotta not like play random champions. You gotta stick to a couple different champions. Um, so, anyway, let me let me explain to you how the format of this video is going to be because uh, I'm sure that you want to know that first. Um, I'm doing I'm going over your PGG. We're gonna talk about what you're going to do. We're gonna talk about your mental state. We're gonna talk about your recent games. We're gonna talk about your schedule. We're gonna talk about how you're gonna move up. Um, and then you're going to jump into a solo queue game and I'm going to spectate you. Um, and as you play your solo queue game, I'm going to want you to focus on your game and I'm going to be drawing all over your game and then you can watch it after and see how I'm going to point out a lot of opportunities that you can do a lot more in the game. Uh, but let me take a look here because you're an ADC man. Caitlyn, how do you? How are you in A's? Do you actually play Lucian bottom lane? Yeah. That's not really a thing anymore. Um, I don't know why anybody would want that. And wait, hold on. What the fuck? What do you have no wins in the past? Why do you not? Why are you not playing? What is this? I haven't. I haven't played in a, like a couple weeks. I think because I've been working a lot. Alright. I, I just played a game, but I was support night, you see. Alright, well, first up to getting good at League is playing a lot. Well, I'm gonna switch to my pen so I can start drawing nicely. Is it on? Yeah. Yeah. Play a lot. You need to play a lot. You need to play two to three games a day. Okay. Do you, yep. Can you do that? Is that is that good for you? Oh yes. Um. Is it all right? So, what's your work schedule like then? Because you need to figure out when these games a day are going to be. Uh, probably at night after I get off. So, so you get off at five p.m. You're gonna take a break for a while. You know, relax, get your shit together, um, and then from seven to ten p.m. You you can play league. You can play two three games, um, and then after ten, you don't play a fourth game. You're gonna stop, and it doesn't matter if, if you win or lose that fourth game, or that that, that third game. <laughs> uh, you're but you're gonna do this every day, and you're gonna be playing at the same time every day. And what the, what that's gonna do is gonna get you into a mindset where you're ready to play, and you're always going to be focused when you're playing. Um, okay. so second of all, we need to figure out um, ADCs that are really good in this current meta for you. Um, because you're Diamond 5, I, I respect the fact that you aren't terrible mechanically. Um, that tells me that you, you at least have some kind of mechanical prowess. Uh, so, as far as your win rates are concerned, you don't have a lot of champions played. Um, I don't think Jin is the best solo queue unless you're with a duo. Caitlyn, I think, is amazing in solo queue, and you have a good win rate with her, and I would keep playing her. Um, Chaya is amazing in solo queue. Um, and you don't really have any other games played on any other ADCs. Callista's decent in solo queue, but better with a duo. Um, Ash is decent in solo queue, depending on how safe you play. Your KDA doesn't tell me that you should play Ash, but that's only nine games. You can change. I know you can change. 
Um, I haven't even tried other ADCs. The real ADCs that like I recommend in ranked are Twitch. Um, maybe Kogma, but mostly Twitch. Why I recommend Twitch is because he's a hyper carry. You can carry a lot of games. Um, and his early laning isn't that bad. It doesn't really matter what support you have, just because you actually do have a decent amount of damage. And as long as you play like reactively, you you can win lane, and any kind of gold you get will snowball you out of control. Um, the other ADC that I like... What am I thinking of? Oh, right now, Tristana. Tristana is broken right now. Like, absolutely retarded. Like, if you win lane, which is not that hard, um, or you even just are winning lane in general, so you push the enemy out, you get tower damage, and the tower damage is insane, because you're, um, I don't you can max your Q first, and or you max your E, uh, you, you use your E in the tower, you get so much damage, you get first blood tower if you are winning lane, and that's guaranteed, like, no one's gonna beat you to that first blood tower if you're winning lane. Um, and then you have power on dragon, it's a safe pick, it's really safe because of her W, it's so long range, and her ultimate, she has so much self peel. Um, so so I'm looking at I'm I'm thinking right now. You have Keat, you have Twitch, uh, and then you have Trist, and then you have Chaya. And all those will be situational, um, but mostly you'll stick to that order of things. So one, two, three, four, Keat, Twitch, Trist, Chaya. Um, I put K to the top just because you have a lot of games on her already and I can trust the fact that you somewhat know how to play her um, I know that, that that may sound rude but I, <laughs> um, I know that you understand that you can do something with her it, that I can only tell that because of your 50%, 57% win rate over almost 100 games. So you're almost hitting that 60%. If you can hit that 60%, then that's really good. And what that means is that you are you can definitely go up to at least Diamond 3, Diamond 2, um, and even surpass that if you keep playing. Um, and then I put Twitch next because I think you should start learning Twitch. Maybe you should play some normals or something with him first to get used to him, get used to his range, get used to his damage. Um, and then once you're once you're done that, you can take him in the ranked, and you can start carrying scrubs because he's he's great in that elo. Um, and then Tristana, um, so she's number two right now, but will be number three after you learn Twitch. Um, that's just how the meta is right now. That Tristana's broken. Uh, and I put Chaya on here just because I saw you had a couple games on her. They they went kind of well, so that means you might want to keep playing her. She's really broken. Uh, the amount of damage she has is really dumb. The amount, like the self peel that she has, is really dumb. Any champion that has an Im immune, Im like an immune uh, invulnerability, is broke in in some way, shape, or form. Just because you can you can actually do whatever you want. Um, okay, so no major problems on your OPGG. That's better than some of these sessions. <laughs> Uh, let me go ahead and log on to, um, North America. How many have you done so far? Uh, I don't know. A couple. Five, maybe. How do you even find your videos? Where the fuck is my videos? No, I'll fucking check later. I think it's like five or six. Um, doesn't really matter. But there are no ADC mains. That was that's why I was a little put off. I was like, all right, this is gonna be different. Cause the thing with the thing with ADC and solo queue is. Yeah, there's a two ways to play. You can either play like an aggressive cunt, um, because uh, like you have to, you're gonna have to tilt your enemy a little bit if you want to win. You either have to play like an aggressive cunt, or you do absolutely nothing until you have enough items where you feel comfortable. And when you feel comfortable, then you just start 
dueling, winning games. Um, and that's a really good thing to do with... Um, both of those playstyles are, like, good with Caitlyn. If Caitlyn's not in, like, an easy lane, um, which is really rare because she wins most lane matchups, um, you can just farm and you can still zone anybody just because she's long range off of CS, even if you're not going to play super aggressive. And then if you're against, like, Twitch, Lucian, Sivir, someone who's, like, low range, doesn't have a lot of dueling power in the early, then you can completely run them over and play, like, an aggressive cunt. Um, and you have to transfer these leads into the first blood tower, or at least into bottom tower, um, if it's, like, a couple seconds off of first blood tower, um, and then you need to rotate as fast as possible, um, and, uh, or maybe you have to back before you rotate, it doesn't matter, just make sure that you're safe, make sure that you have all your resources you need, make sure you don't waste all your fucking mana, because there's... I know too many ADCs that, like, don't understand how to manage their mana. Um, because if you want to continue to be useful, you're going to have to have your spells. So if you're going to play champions like Caitlyn, or you're going to use a lot of spells, then you need to understand that you can't, you can't just go flat broke on mana in the middle of a fight, or when you're about to siege a tower, or when you want to take Baron, or when you want to take a dragon and the enemy can contest it. What the fuck, Lee? Why aren't you opening? What the fuck? <coughs> mm. I hear all my videos. Having a problem with League of Legends. Hold on. Do you have it updated? <laughs> yeah, of course I have it updated. <laughs> uh, no, it was just uh, because I closed it really quickly, um, and then opened it again. It does. It it sometimes does a glitch where it doesn't like to open or close. Holy shit. Alright, I think it's working, but I don't know why. Okay. I'm gonna add you because this is a different account, probably. you get that? Gotcha. Yep. <laughs> Alright, so you can go ahead and jump into solo queue. Um, I'd recommend playing Caitlyn just so I can see exactly what you're doing with that. Um, make sure that you're playing it at the 100% efficiency. If Caitlyn happens to be banned, because she is a popular ban right now, or she happens to be picked, um, then you can try Tristana, or you can try Twitch. Um, I guess Zaya isn't that bad into Caitlyn either. The thing is, the thing is, because Caitlyn can win every matchup, um, you always have to think what you're gonna play into her, and sometimes it depends on like what support you have, because maybe you feel more comfortable playing with a specific support on on one of these champions, and I don't know that. Um, but if if you're going to play something that's more comfortable to you, then you've done, you still have to play to your limits. Um, because I think a lot of people don't understand that. Um, like, if you play... Playing... Hold on. Like, playing Comfort Chance. Right? It allows you to relax. And what that really does is allows you to kind of sit back and let the game take place. But... Gaining elo 
is not relaxing. No. Relaxing, no. Um, and it's not fun either. Like, grinding, grinding... I mean, like, fuck, I'm doing it right now. Not fun. Oh, man, at the beginning of the season, when I wasn't working, I, uh... I did a couple, like, bad duo games in my placements, which kind of fucked up my MMR, and it placed me, like, I think, gold... I think it was gold 5 I got placed in solo. So I climbed from gold 5 to plat 1 in like a month. Yeah, um, I transferred an account to last, and I got placed to like gold 3 or gold 4, and I had to I had to grind to where I am now. I'm sitting in fucking plat 2. I've been, jump I've been jumping between plat 2 and plat 1. The last server is like really weird, so it's it's not what I'm used to. God, this give me the fact that you haven't played like games recently. I, I can't really assume anything from your recent games. That's 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 why this is, this feels weird. Yeah, and I'm probably gonna be rusty too when you spectate. So. When you do start loading in, I'm going to tell you a little bit about your win condition. Because analyzing your win condition in a solo queue game can help you a lot. Um, it's going to help you less than it would help other people because you're playing ADC. Uh, so you don't exactly have like a fancy win condition. Or you don't have a lot of impact on like your actual win condition. Whereas someone like a jungler could have a large impact on it. Um, and, or even a mid laner. But you can still be patient and as long as you can win lane. And if you play Caitlyn every game, you can win lane every game. And I'm telling, I'm telling you that with a 100%, like 100%, Kate wins lane. Like you might have some, you might have some problems later, um, depending on. Like, once you get to Diamond 2, you might have some problems. Like, people are going to start to understand how to deal with Caitlyn, um, how to play how to play against her, how to farm correctly against her, um, and you're going to start seeing more prowess in the support role. A lot of people are going to start getting really good at that support, uh, getting really good at playing even in bad matchups and winning bad matchups just because they know their individual win condition. Um, and that's one thing you can think of as an ADC, that your individual win condition, as in the win condition um, that is only only related to yourself. Um, and to anybody that watches this video, this, this is something that you should learn. Um, you your win condition is based on what champion you're playing um, but yeah in the ADC role this usually is just to win lane it usually is just to win lane um, I could stream this game if you'd rather watch the stream instead of spectating so it won't be delayed uh, if you'd prefer that then I can go ahead and do that it's up to you I mean, if you'd rather hear me talking over the gameplay that you're currently doing rather than the gameplay three minutes ago. Has the game already started? Yeah, I'm, I'm just loading in now. Three seconds in. Oh. Yeah, don't worry about it then. Alright, so... Good, we're playing Caitlyn. We're playing Caitlyn against Jin. Let me turn on a different color here so I can just get everything. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, Jin Galio bot lane. Okay, so this is really interesting because Galio has a lot of damage and a lot of wave clear, and he's going to be really annoying for um, the Winds of War. Uh, yeah. Those are going to do a lot of damage. Huh? He's super melee, so I'll be able to poke him out a lot. Yeah, no. During the level 1, 2, 3, and 4, um, you can poke down Galio. Um, and this is the same strategy as uh, playing against Leona. Because Leona is a champion that isn't really useful early on. Um, she does have a level 2 power spike, and Galio is going to have the same thing. But uh, if you poke them down before they are able to... Before they... Let me change color... Before they can reach their individual win condition. This fucking I really just suicided our mid tower and we didn't get a kill off of it because it took TFA AFK. XD. Anyway, um, so you have Sejuani in the jungle, which is really good for late game. You have Jarvan top, which is really good for late game because these are going to be hard engage and hard, um, Peel. So, and this is really good for Caitlyn because you're gonna, you're already so long range. You already have self peel, um, so you can keep yourself alive. You can keep yourself long range, uh, and as long as you build correctly, you'll be able to be as useful as possible. And you also have a TF, um, and the TF might be looking for one of those level six ganks in the bottom lane. Um, that's something that you can think about. Like, don't push up when around that time that you're like level four, or level five-ish, because TF is going to be level six, so he's going to be searching for that bottom lane gank. Um, but as for like, playing against Jin, you can you can poke down Jin. with headshots. all of the laning phase. You can also get other free autos. But don't take damage. to note this game. No. So this spell lane is pretty simple. Remember, poking Galio early and poking Jin when possible after Galio is already at a point where he's not able to do anything. Um, all you have to do is be careful about um, Twitch ganks. Twitch is going to do a lot of lane ganks, which means if you're pushed up really far, it's going to be really easy for him to gank. And it's going to be really easy for him to just pop up in your face um, and get free kills because of that. Twitch is also coming, can be able to come behind you, so getting deep vision is worth it. Um, getting deep vision with your support, pinging your support, hey, um, the little flag, help me, ward. Um, so that you can you, you can make sure that you're as safe as possible. Understand when the enemy mid laner is in lane or not. Um, and be aware that if your top laner doesn't have teleport and the enemy top laner does, you're going to have a big problem if you push up. Is the Aurelia constantly inting? I'm pretty sure your Aurelia is just inting for some reason. You shouldn't be taking this damage. 
it's not a lot, but it bothers me. There's a way you can dance around the minions when they're chasing you, and you only take like one or two hits. See, there's there's no reason for you to be so pushed back at this level one. Like, if you used your Q, you could be able to keep the lane here. Like, cause cause this zone is really nice for you. It's really nice for your jungler, and it's really nice for just staying safe. And using your Q to play aggressively there, using it for damage, not being able to push the lane, just keeps getting you pushed in a tower. And it's a lot harder to farm under tower than it is in the lane. So maybe keeping yourself out of the tower range is a little bit better. Because um, Sejuani's not going to be looking for early ganks. If we were talking about Twitch Jungle being on your team or something like that, then maybe maybe getting pushed into your tower is a good thing. But there's not there's nothing on your team that tells me, hey, if we get pushed in our tower, someone's going to retaliate. Um, there's there's nothing like that. And even if there was, you can't rely on your teammates to do something for you. Even if even if it's their champion, even if it's just like expecting them to be them, uh, it it can fail. So let me let me talk about this trade. I'm gonna talk about this trade that just happened. First of all, you're using a lot of your mana in lane, um, and I know that you would normally have to use a lot of this mana. The thing is that you've missed a lot of CS anyway because you used a lot of those Qs for not the CS wave, um, or even if you did, you like you used one in their tower that just wasted. Um, you didn't even get the minion. I don't even think. Um, but anyway, let's let's look at this trade real quick. Uh, Rakan enters. I don't like Rakan entering. Just make sure that you stay at maximum range. Understand, like Galio's E is going to give him to about here. So this is the range that he's going to be hitting. He's going to back up, power punch, um, and Jin's going to be standard range. Or uh, you're close to his range now. This is where you have a problem. You used Q, um, and using Q locks you out of your character. Uh, and why that's a bad thing is it allows people to capitalize. if you're in a bad position. And this is not a good position because Galia can reach here, he's going to be reaching about here. Um, and then once he has the shield, and he's going to get a lot of free damage, and this is the free damage that I didn't want you taking. Um, whereas, if you were autoing Jin here, just an auto attack, um, you would be able to E away in that direction. So you'd E, you'd e here, and you'd be moved to that direction. Um, and you'd be able to dodge this Galio rather than getting knocked up, getting hit by the Jin W, taking all the free damage, and now you're also out of mana. You would have never used your Q in that trade, so you'd still have a Q worth of mana. This was a fine trade. Just make sure not to miss too much CS. You want to make sure you get all of the CS. Um, because you should be able to analyze. 
before I'm just gonna fucking be very specific before a trade starts you should know if you can win and you should know if you have kill pressure right because kill pressure does not equal um, does not equal winning a trade there there are two different things you can win a trade does not mean that you get a kill winning the trade just means that you won the trade like you won the trade in health um, like you got them low getting people low getting people um, out of lane you're, you're wasting so much time here if you're gonna back off all the way in the first place you shouldn't have even started recalling in that front bush um, that's just sloppy you have 45 CS at 6 minutes and 45 seconds um, so let me just think for a second how many waves there were um, 130 to 630 is 5 minutes 5 minutes 10 waves 6 6 7 6 6 7 6 6 Seven six, right? Um, yeah, one thirty-six. Sixty-one. You missed sixteen CS during the first six minutes. You should fix that. You're you're down sixteen right now. Yeah, I didn't know they had vision in that bush. Fuck me up. Remember, don't focus on me, focus on your play. You can watch the video. I say general things a lot so that you know, and that you can use them in your play and further in the game, but stay focused. Watch out. Also, when you got pushed in on the early levels, you weren't able to abuse um, Caitlyn's like good levels one to two, um, which is before Galio gets his combo. Um, which allows you to uh, push in the lane and get get an early lead. Um, whether the early lead be CS um, or Jin using his pot, because that's really big if you still has if you still have your pot. Um, it was a nice E, but you you gotta understand you're you're alone in lane. You can't farm safely alone in lane. The Aurelia is level 2. Yeah, she's just trolling. <sighs> that's really that's really bad for this this lesson. Because I need the ADC role is more about the mid and late game than it is about the laning phase. Like you can snowball laning phase, um, and you can do it with Caitlyn and you can do it with Tristana and you can even do it with Twitch. Um like you can snowball the laning phase pretty hard 
but being able to connect that lead into the mid game to make sure that you're able to win is very important so I'm not going to be able to tell you a lot about that but it's really going to be focused on your rotations whether or not you get your you get your tower and bottom lane um, and rotate mid or even rotating mid early to get mid tower um, if there if you feel as if you can have a trade in mid um, or if the enemy bot is pushed out and the tower is full health and you don't feel like um, wasting your time um, hitting the tower maybe you can roam mid and get a kill there This trade initiated by Rakan, as you had no mana during the entire time, is not really your fault. Um, it's Rakan, Rakan engaging for like absolutely no reason, but you can't really worry about that. You just kind of have to play the game. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to see you actually play this game. I only got to see the laning phase. Everybody's fed. That's a shame. We can do another game sometime when you're not busy. I'm not busy. We can do another game. It just makes the video very long. As long as you're okay with the video being long. This is like so greedy. Like what you did right here. Like think about what you did right here. Holy shit. No. Camera. Okay. Okay. Pa no. Fuck. This camera. I fucking hate the fucking um, League of Legends spectate system. Alright, so you could have backed off before now. Um, I know that like you really want the CS, and like I really want the CS too. But like you should be peeling off, peeling off, and maybe you queue here, and you get maybe these two CS, or maybe you queue here, and you get all of them or most of them. But like this is greedy because once Galio gets about here, you're in danger. You're in huge danger because even if he misses his E. Um, because the Galio E say from here to here, and you E it, um, which you can't because you have no mana, which is another reason why it's greedy, no mana. Um, but, uh, his, his W range is going to be able to keep you at bay. Um, another thing you should note is that Galio and Jin both have flash, um, and you don't have flash. Actually, your flash just came up, but it doesn't matter. That was good kiting and getting getting the most damage off. Before you die. How close is that game to being over? They just surrendered. Okay. I'm exiting out of this because there's nothing to see here. You were just there. You weren't doing anything. In the game, yeah. Alright, let's try this again. One more time. The chances of that having t happening twice in a row is quite low. At least on that on that scale of everybody being super fed for no reason. Do we 
here we go. Game two, here we go. So what do you do? For what, work? Yeah. Uh, I work at a restaurant. Uh, doing what? Everything. Serving, bartending, cooking. So you're a handyman. That's me. I used to do that. Fun times. You're what? <laughs> XD. So you in college? No. Uh, I took a few years off because I wasn't like sure what I wanted to do. I didn't want to waste my money. Mm, so you're, do you plan on going back? Yeah, I'll probably go for business or something. Business? Where? Uh, probably at the university, one of the universities near me. But they're all Canadian universities, so you wouldn't know what they are. Mm, I forgot you were from Canada. Yeah, I only remember us um, being at the world semifinals. Yeah. That was lit. Yeah, That's dude. Fun. SKT versus Rocks. Great games. And those fucking seats that Jeff bought. Those were insane. I think Jeff and I are going to the um, the summer finals for NA in Boston. Yeah, I was thinking about going. Yeah, I'll be close. Why does this game show up different? What the fuck? OPGG? When did this happen? What the fuck? Still in queue. Unlucky. Anyway, I didn't do any other ADC coaching, but this is going on YouTube, so you can tell anybody that any of your friends to watch it. Just the same, same, same shit applies. But if they're lower ELO, then they can play a lot more aggressive. Because suddenly, you need you need some form of aggression if you want to carry a lot of games. Um, but in the ADC role, generally, a lot of people uh, don't need that aggressive or don't use that aggression. Um, they lose a lot of games uh, just because they're not able to scale up um, before the game ends. Um, and that's one thing that you should really think about. Um, there's going to be a lot of games that you can't really control how fast it's ending, um, but the one step on controlling it is perfect CS. Uh, and you can count that at 5 minutes, it's 38. Um, at 10 minutes, it's... I, I can't remember the number on the top of my head, I'd have to think. 5 minutes... Um, how many 667 six, waves is that? 10, it's 10 more. 666... Six, six, six. Forty-two plus twenty-one is uh, sixty-three. Sixty-three plus thirty-eight is one hundred one. Er, yeah, one hundred one at ten minutes. That's probably wrong. That might be wrong, because there might be it might be like one hundred two or one hundred three or maybe ninety-nine, um, depending on what the six-six-seven count is. Um, cause I'm sure you know that every wave comes 667, 667 until 25 minutes, and then it's 6767, and then 35 minutes, it's, uh, 777. Seven. 
my plays later this game, unless you want me to play Kate again. Uh, it doesn't really matter to me. If you feel like you can perform better on Shia this game, then do it. Got a Susan on my team. They just buffed that champion. I know he's busted. like take so long come on if you want to set your stream up while it's while you have time now then I can use that sure uh what's the twitch TV link So anyway, the deal is, um, after this, if you make, if you make D2, I'll give you another lesson for free. Okay. That's the deal. Because I have to give you incentive to go up, or else maybe you won't go up. Everything needs to be right. Perfect conditions allow for perfect play. Did you get the stream like I posted in the Discord? Mm, flavor 23. Oops. Alright, here we are. <laughs> oh, cool, an ad. <laughs> Gotta get that stream revenue. The ad was like actually four seconds long. Anyway, uh, you're playing Chaira Khan. That's fine. You can work on the, the enhanced recall uh, for farming and shit. Just make sure you abuse it. You have a Trundle Jungle, a Syndra mid. Syndra's going to. Okay, so the mid matchup zero zero zero. So like. Don't even pretend pretend that mid matchup isn't there because it's Cinder Echo, um, so neither of them are gonna kill each other ever. Um, it just it just won't happen unless one of them's retarded. Uh, to us for the top lane matchup, that's gonna depend on how smart Nasus is because he just needs to not die. Um, and then for you, who are you against? Hold tab. Twitch uh, Thresh. It's Twitch Thresh. Alright, so you're going to have to be really careful about the Thresh. Because Thresh in the early game is going to do a lot of game, um, do a decent amount of damage, and he's going to do a lot of shit with his uh, Q and his E. Um, so he's going to have that level 2 spike where he's probably going to engage on level 2, so don't let him engage. Um, he's going to do the same thing at level 3 when he has uh, Lantern. Uh, to try and nullify some of the damage that you're going to be able to put off onto him. Um, Thresh does have exhaust, 
so you you don't have to worry about ignite um, because th support should be really taking ignite right now uh, especially in solo queue especially in solo queue um, as for your does your recon of exhaust or ignite exhaust. okay um, so you're not going to be playing this lane hyper aggressive uh, you're really just going to be following the recon uh, he probably won't go in until the mid game, uh, around that level five, six, seven. Um, but if he goes in before that, make sure to take the trade as it comes, um, rather than trying to play hyper aggressive. Only pl you're only going to play hyper aggressive if you absolutely 100% sure know that you have kill pressure. Remember, winning a trade is not kill pressure, therefore kill pressure is something else, so you have to know that you're going to get that kill. Um, and if you know that you're going to get that kill and get that lead and push the CS wave and then you're going to be able to get a, a bigger lead because he's going to miss CS, he's going to miss experience, you're going to get tower damage, and you can snowball that into winning the lane even further. What the fuck? I have no idea why he engaged level 1. That was really, really dumb. Alright, well, you have to use your pot. Rakan took 3 pots, so he's fine. You're gonna miss some CS. Um, don't let Thresh engage on you. Remember, you can't, you don't, you can't let Thresh engage on you. Good. So what really happened there was after Thresh used the flay, you were able to knock back behind a minion, and once you were able to use the minion um, uh, as a blocker for Thresh's hook, um, you were able to win the fight after Rakan is able to engage a second time just because of the Zaya Rakan dynamic. Um, and then I know Rakan was just uh, hitting your CS there. Um, <laughs> That would tilt the shit out of me if I was playing ADC, but you can't really let it tilt you. Um, you can't let your support being retarded or taking CS or really doing anything um, change the way you're going to be playing. Oh, he got back to lane fast. Those level 2 death timers. You're gonna rush Essence Reaver? Yep. That's really interesting. Essence Reaver isn't really my first thing when I when I think of trying to play um, win a game with a carry ADC. Um, when I when I think, I usually think uh, first of all you have BF Sword. Um, static Shiv is always OP. Um, Depending on what ADC you're playing, Sivir, Lucian, Caitlyn, Twitch, Rapid Fire Cannon is really good. Um, but uh, I, I don't really I don't really see this Essence Reaver unless you're looking for a fifth item um, with crit trance equals to that twenty percent because if you're if you get static and rapid and infinity edge. Uh, you can get that 100%, uh, and it also gives you 70 damage. Um, because when you when you opt into Essence Reaver um, for an early an early game item, you're saying that you're just going to spam spells, um, and y it it kind of also says that because you're spamming spells and because you're you're saying that you want to continue trading because that mana, the mana regen, is for trading. It's not it's not for comfort. It's for trading. It's for using your spells more and more and more. And then because you're using your spells more, um, you get more damage. Um, and in 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 theory, that make and that makes a lot of sense. Um, but you have to you have to use that to get a further lead.
because the um, there there is no unique passive. Uh, on Essence Reaver. That's really useful. Whereas, um, unique passives that are really strong in the game, um, IE passive, static passive, Um, rapid, depending on their champion. Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. <laughs> what the fuck? Um, last whisper. All of these unique passives are a lot stronger than that mana regen, but you have to use that mana regen to be able to trade more. That's that's the idea. Anyway, you have 45 CS at 7 minutes, again, needs, uh, you lost about 10 CS in the early game because of Rakan, I'll give you that, um, but other than that, you still missed another 6, 7, maybe 8, um, just by yourself. Yeah. Like I said, a bit rusty. Yeah, no. Getting getting perfect at is is hard. Getting perfect at is really hard. I was actually playing EDC yesterday, and I don't really play EDC. Um, and I was using a different rune page than I normally use. Uh, instead of get the instead of the fifteen AD, um, I only took eighty marks with his eight and a half, and I missed so many CS that game. It was ridiculous. Um, <laughs> kind of just super robs your CS there. Rakan needs to be careful, ping him danger. Or well. Twitch just continued recalling. At this point you can be searching um you can be searching for more vision, you can be searching for more, because you've, you've your warding totem up in a little bit. Um, you can take out the blast plant here if it's still up, you can get vision over here, you can get vision around mid. Um, How did that not fucking stun her? It's really nice to get vision here, especially against Evelyn um, in that bush. Uh, just because if she goes to take scuttle crab, then you'll be able to see her. You used E before ultimate here. Um, whereas if you waited afterwards, then you probably would have done a lot more damage. And it would have been a lot cleaner. And you want you want to be clean. If you're gonna go up in ELO, you gotta be clean. Very clean. You need boots. <laughs> you need to prioritize boots. Why? Prioritizing boots is really important. Uh, movement speed is really important. 25 movement speed uh, changes the entire game. Um, Especially versus champions that have a lot of skill shots. Yeah. Like Thresh. Yep. I, I regularly buy tier 2 boots at 10 minutes <laughs> against champions like Thresh, uh, Zeroth, Lux, um, I, any brand, any champion that's highly reliant on specific skill shots that you can dodge much more easily with tier 2 boots. Um, tier 2 boots are really nice, um, but it's also, it has to be noted that tier 2 boots are another thing that are kind of like how I was explaining with Essence Reaver, where if you're buying it and you're using the gold on it and it's not giving you a unique passive that you could have um, with a different amount of gold, then you're not going to have the um, 
you're you're not gonna have the power that you need in the mid game. Because if the other ADC doesn't prioritize those boots and say he finishes his um, Infinity Edge and you haven't finished Infinity Edge but you have tier two boots, there's a there's a chance he'll win the fight purely because he'll just hit more crits. Um, or he'll hit crits and you don't because maybe you maybe you bought the damage. Depends. Yes. Why? They just put Earth on. Yeah. They just put Earth on. Yeah. Yo. That's fucking amazing. I'll play after this. It's nice that your team got mid lane tower for you, um, rather than you having to rotate for that. Uh, looks like they're gonna be dying for it. But now that you're three and zero, hold on. Do you need the tier two boots? Yeah, get the BS sword. That's great. Because you you need to start snowballing a lot harder. Because if you look at the map right now, uh, press tab and hold tab while you're walking back to lane. Top side of the map's losing pretty hard. Which is okay, so Trundle's a dingus, Nasus is a dingus, um Cinder is not a dingus, but um it's it's alright that Trundle and Nasus are being a dingus right now. They're building tank, they're still gonna be useful. Um you just need to be uh, aware that they could feed more. Uh, you need to be aware that because they have fed, there are going to be champions in the game that are as strong as you right now. Because you are three and zero, and you have decent CS, but it's not it's not enough to completely overpower someone when they have when they also have three kills. Or they also have uh, something like that, and it's and a lot of these champions that are really powerful right now are going to be like that Riven in the top lane, just because she has. Um, uh, a lot of kills and she's a melee and she's gonna be stronger than you. Anyway, that was actually a really good combo by you. Um, you were able to get as much damage off as possible, that was definitely maximum, uh, and you were able to almost get the twitch even before you died, and, oh, and ended up getting both kills. Um, yeah, this Rakan's crazy, dude. Trundle needs to like get the fuck out. Whatever. Don't worry about it. If you don't stress about it and you don't worry about it, it'll never be your problem. Right? Don't search for things you can't get. Yeah, I know, I've been saying that. <laughs> Already did that. <coughs> Already explained it. Yeah, Gambit's right. Did you hear that? Yeah, I talked about how the Essence Reaver, when you build it, um, you need to get something out of the passive by continuous trading. Um, because, because it... Yeah, but you, it's also, you, you can use those spells for continuous training, and, and because you can continuously trade and the enemy ADC cannot, because they don't have Essence Reaver, because they don't have the mana, then you can try and force um, fights that you already have an advantage in. And then because you already have an advantage, you can get more kills, and because you get more kills, then it doesn't matter which item you rushed, because you're going to be fed. Shut up, bitch, playing <laughs> Shut up, bitch, playing Oof. <laughs> 
That's the best team ever, dude. But, uh, no, what Gambite said is that, um, buying a zeal before finishing <laughs> essence is really nice, just because the zeal is really strong. Um, you can actually, after this wave, uh, what the fuck? Oh, fuck me. You gotta be more careful about the Twitch. You always have to understand that Twitch is a champion, that even when he's not there, he's there. Um, it's kind of the same as Evelyn. It's really, it's really funny how they both have Twitch and Evelyn on their team. Um, but if he, if you do not see him, anywhere on the map, anywhere, he's dangerous. He has, he's dangerous. You assume that he is dangerous. You assume that he can be where you are, and therefore you assume that you could be in a situation that's bad. Wow, the Syndra. You need to stop looking at uh, other people on the map when you're in lane. Anyway, you don't see, let's see, Riven's top, Ekka's mid, um, you don't see Evelyn, but you, you're fine with Evelyn, so you, you need to, you can push this tower here, Twitch is not around, but he could show up at any time, if Twitch and Evelyn show up at the same time, then you might have a problem. Oh. So I said Echo was mid when we saw him mid, but the wave crashed in mid. You see how the wave crashed in mid? Um, as soon as the wave crashes, if Echo's not there, then he can be in a dangerous situation. I mean, also, you, you had no wards, um, and you have blue trinket, which means you could have used blue trinket in the river. Um, because if you're, if you're going to have something, you might as well use it. You, wait, you got... Phantom Dancer second. Are you going to build Infinity Edge next? Mm, maybe. I just feel like... If I, if I fall behind, then no. But if I'm staying ahead, then yes. It, I just feel like it's really important for you to have that item right now. Because it's like, Infinity Edge isn't something that you buy sixth item. Like, it's, it's not a fifth, sixth item. It's just not... Um, because you need it earlier in the game, and then when you buy later items that give you damage, they're actually they're actually more gold efficient because of the passive that Infinity gives you. Mm. <sighs> Disrespecting Evelyn again. That's what you were doing. You need to understand where you are in the map. Where. How many teammates do you have? If you don't have that many teammates, and there can be more people w that can show up to where you are if you're in some kind of area with fog of war, which means you'd be at a man disadvantage. I think I need to stop following this Rakan because you have to situations. There's no reason for you to follow the Rakan. There is a reason for you to like go somewhere on the map to be useful, but there's nowhere on the map to be useful for you right now. Think about it. We have all outer towers, so their their map looks like this. I'm not, I'm remember I'm drawing on your screen. Um so it's you will you'll see it when you watch the video. Um but if their map looks like this, then they also have a gray zone that looks like this. Which means the gray zone that I'm drawing out um, is a dangerous zone. Um, 
it doesn't necessarily include the river. The river is usually what I always call uh, a neutral zone, uh, which means it's not in control by anybody, um, un unless very strong implications of in a gold lead are in play. Um, so really, you just have to be moving around, getting CS. Maybe you can farm some camps. Um, and as long as you you can be useful, or as long as you keep scaling up, because your CS right now is abysmal, first of all. Um, I, I know that sounds bad, but it's one 128 at 20 minutes, and you can easily have 210 at 20 minutes. Um, and that, like, 70 CS... 70 CS, uh, if a CS is worth about 22 gold on average, um, and every 20th CS is worth 50 gold, then you're going to have three of those CS be worth 50 gold, so you have 150, and then you have another 65 CS worth about 20, so then you have 1200 uh, plus 50 times 20, 200. Uh, or no, I thought, uh, no, yeah, no, it's like 1300, 1400. You're talking about 1450 gold. I, I, sorry, it took me a little, it, it took me a little bit to do the math in my head, but you, that's how much gold you're missing from CS. Then that's, a, that sounds like a lot, doesn't it? Because it is. Um, it's insane. Um, I mean, uh, people, a lot of pros would actually say that even 5 CS, like a 5 CS lead, is big. Um, because uh, it's a pink ward, it's leaving, it's a little bit more than pink ward. 5 CS is a pink ward and a, and a potion. Um, the thing about what's happening in mid right now is if your team's grouped up, you need to either ping them danger because you're not there, or you need to just move towards there. I know that you were farming uh, minions that were getting under a turret, um, but you need to either be useful or tell your team to be less useful um, until you're ready to be useful. Watch out. Did you not see Echo? Not until he dove me. Oh. No, I saw him walk from top lane. He was in vision almost the whole time. This is why I, this is why like ADC is a really weird role for me. I'm probably not the best ADC coach. But what I can tell you is that CS first, second, grouping with your team if they are grouped, if you can win fights at all. Um, the game looks pretty abysmal at this point, um, but it's not exactly over. It's not over till they break the base. If you're once your base is broken, then you have a problem. Um, or if the enemy team gets a free Baron, then you also have a problem. They're always doing something. Oh, that could be good. Free dragon. And it's a mountain dragon. Gives you pressure on Baron. How long is Echo dead? Hey, careful. Watch out. Look at what Rakan's doing. Yeah. You shouldn't be here. There's no reason to stay here. There's no reason to stay here. I told you. I, I told you like three times. There's no reason to be here. If your team's going to die, let them. Just run the fuck yeah. away. Just like, let... I was about to run and then the fucking thresh smacked well, me. Yeah, but I told you to run long before that. <laughs> I mean, I told you to get out of there long before that. Let your team make the mistakes they will. This game might be a little bit over, 
you might have had to start grouping with your team and and telling maybe even like telling your chat like hey let's try grouping or hey let's move into a lane together or hey let's move around together you can be nice about it but like earlier in the game because now now things are starting to snowball out of control rather where earlier in the game when the score was like 10 to 21 and you would, you were five and three things were a lot different you had a lot more control in the game and frankly you probably did a lot more damage percentage wise um than you do now yeah you don't you don't really hurt the echo that much um you just had to range my route yeah, I saw. Do you use attack? You don't use attack move. Um, a lot of ADCs recommend using attack move. No, I've never used it. Just press A. Um, when you're in like a non-dangerous situation and just like stop very good combo not going to be used so well though because there's still an Evelyn no this game's over yeah, you needed to you needed to group when the score was ten to twenty one. Because when the score is fourteen to thirty five, things are a lot different, right? That's a big difference in gold. You're talking about fourteen kills, you're talking about three hundred gold per kill, you're talking about over three thousand gold. You're no, you're talking about forty two hundred gold, sorry, bad math. Um That's that's a lot. So you need to be more useful, you need to farm better, you need to figure out what's going on, um, and you need to stick to just the couple ADCs, and that's it. Uh, and if you play an all-for-all, um, just keep keep your secondary role as like one champion. Um, and only play that one champion. And make sure it's easy, simple, um, and, you, and you know exactly what you need to do with it to win the game. Like, uh, what do you queue secondary? Alright, well, I mean, there's plenty of options for that. There's a Nivea, there's an Annie, there's... Uh, uh, both of those are, like, not so great right now. But... Um, there's, they're still useful. I mean, you can still use them. You won't feed with them. Which means there's a small chance... Well, there's a, there's a decent chance that if you just don't feed, then you'll win the game. Um... It's about a 50% chance. Assuming you don't get any kills either. <clears throat> but you work on that. You work on that stuff. And you get Diamond 2 and then you get another lesson. For free. And then we'll, we'll start getting into like really down specifics. Um, because once you get into that elo, things are gonna things are gonna start acting a lot different. Because low diamonds are really uh, weird elo in North America. Um, but it's manageable. It's people. People seem to know what they're doing, but they don't always. But uh, mm -hmm. you'll figure it out. I mean, I've been I've been in D4 a couple of times, and I think I got to D3 a while ago, but then I've dropped since then. Mm. I haven't been playing as much. Yeah, you need to play. You need to play a lot if you want to win. Anyway, here's the recording.